Hello, my name is Rodolfo Silva, and let's talk about how to bring your own reference images into ZBrush for iPad. So I just started this project with this cube model over here. And the first thing you want to do is you want to bring in your images to the textures folder under your ZBrush folder on your iPad. Because what we are going to do is actually going to access this floor grid sub palette under the palettes menu. In here, you can see we have floor grid options, and then you have underneath it, reference image options. This is where you'll actually bring in all your reference images. So the first thing you have to take into account is, well, after you bring in a map, so let's say that I'm doing this starship over here. So this is the front and back, and then you have up and down, left and right. And in this case, let's just bring in the actually the side view. So let's go to the left and right, click this map one, and let's look for my side view. There you go. If I click here, you can see now that the reference image is now on the floor grid. Like we've said before, you can actually turn on and off those floor planes by holding your finger over the floor grid button on your UI and just turning on and off specific floor grids. And since your images are tied to those floor grids, turning on and off specific planes will basically enable or disable your reference images. So now under the reference image options, you have various different fill modes. So fill mode number zero is no reference image. Number one brings in your reference image. Your model is opaque, but your reference image is semi-opaque. Number two would make your reference image a little more opaque. And number three will make your reference image full on see through your model. So now you have these two little sliders called enhance factor and enhance opacity. So if I raise the enhance opacity, basically your reference image will supersede your model and all you'll be left with is the silhouette of your model or the lines of your silhouette. If you decrease the enhance factor, however, you'll see that there's a fall off. You can't really see that because this is a cube model, but if I switch this from a cube, let's say, to a sphere, and now back to my floor grid settings, if I change this enhance factor, this is what will start to happen. There's a fall off to the angle of your model. In my case, I was using a cube and that's why you couldn't really see any change. So if I change the opacity, it's gonna change how that image is projected through your model. And then the factor would be kind of like the fall off. So another thing you can do is go under the floor grid projection options and just project that image onto your mesh. So now you can't really scale, rotate your model unless you're in a different view. Also go down below, let's reduce this project on mesh. And now, for example, let's do the up and down part of our model. So if I go to map one, let me look for my top view. So click this one. And now map two will be the bottom. So I'm going to find my bottom reference. And now if I move the camera, you can see that I'm seeing the top and the bottom view, but the bottom view is kind of like dotted. If I don't like that, I can just scroll all the way down to the bottom, go under modifiers and turn off these back dots. So now what you can do is rotate those images. So if you go to your floor grid on each and every one of these tabs, the left, right, the up, down. So on the up, down, I can just click this rotate button and on my first image actually selected, rotate it to the front. And here you can see this one is flipped. So I can rotate that. So you can tweak all those images to make them match. And now as you have this, you can obviously come over here. I don't know with your clip curve brush and just start the block out process. So that covers how to bring in reference images to ZBrush for iPad. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.